So this week I learned that apparently being a rock star, it sounds like a lot of work. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update. We are a couple weeks into November now, headed towards the holidays, and a happy Friday to all of you guys. Lots of new things happening this week and going to be happening next week, and of course happened last week. But let's talk about all those. We're going to begin, like usual, guys, with what am I reading? I did happen to finish Richard Parker. This is Life of Pi. A fantastic book, a very, very spiritual journey. Uh, I, I think that I, what I said is I had read the, I had seen the movie before I read the book, and I very much consider that a survival movie. Whereas this one is very much like a spiritual journey, is how I would kind of define it. And uh, after I finished it, uh, my wife and I argued for about thirty minutes about the ending, in which she is probably correct and I am in denial because there's no way that some of these things. <laughs> let's just say it's a very uh, divisive ending, and it kind of just depends on. If uh, if you're looking at things as a, as a as a sadist, my wife, or as an optimist myself, uh, but uh, but also maybe a little bit of realism on her uh, her behalf and idealism on mine. So uh, it's a book that I think inspires a lot of conversation. But it's a brilliant, brilliant read, and I think everyone should read it. But uh, I, I think everyone should watch that movie too. I think it's a movie that really just uh, hit home with me very well, it made me want to read this. I'm glad that I did, and I would recommend it to just about everyone. And then uh, last night in bed, I finished uh, the Dave Grohl autobiography. If you don't know, Dave Grohl is the singer of Foo Fighters, previously of Nirvana. And uh, what I learned in this, the, uh, the punk band Scream. Uh, I, don't, I wasn't real big into the underground punk scene there in the early 90s. So uh, I was unaware of that. But uh, this is an amazing read for everybody. Look, I always admit to loving Rockstar autobiographies, I think that they're just so interesting. Uh, but with this, I think what was different with this one is, uh, like I said, that 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 time period of music was, you know, a time of musical discovery for myself, moving from like, you know, the Beatles and hair bands to all of a sudden the uh, the alternative grunge movement there in the early '90s was a big deal with me. And uh, so obviously, I've followed his career ever since then. Uh, but with this, I think is. If you like Foo Fighters and Nirvana, sure, you'll like the book. But if you just like good rock and roll stories, I think you're going to have a great time. Like, There's one where it's talking about him and Taylor. That's the drummer from Foo Fighters getting invited to Pantera's strip club. And let's just say it has a hilarious and somewhat heartbreaking ending to that story. But there's one in particular in here where he's talking about uh, Paul McCartney and his young daughter playing piano together that just absolutely like gutted me. Just so beautiful. So guys, amazing, amazing story. I think that uh, it's really just if you want to see just a small town kid makes good, I think that you'll have a great, great time with this book, regardless of if you are into his music or not. But it really, really does help, I think. But uh, just a fantastic read, and I would suggest everyone check it out if you even like a little bit of Foo Fighters or Nirvana or just, uh, you know, music of the 90s and 2000s. I think that uh, you'll find plenty there to like. Then I also finished Volume 25 of Berserk, so I'm back on it. Slowly but surely. I'm reading a little bit uh, at work on lunch breaks each day. Uh, but I have gotten so caught up with my stuff in November now that I think that I'll start to, uh, uh, start to move along at a steadier pace. It's volume 35, I think, is the end of this arc. And that is when we'll talk about the Falcon of the Millennium Empire arc. So I appreciate you guys' patience. I'm sure I'll have uh, the one gentleman who always comments just one word in my comments of every video I make, Berserk. So uh, it is happening. And eventually, uh, hopefully... I'll have that Berserk video and you can talk about Berserk instead of just that one word. Let's move along, guys, to what am I going to read. Now, obviously, I'm going to keep rolling through Berserk. But since I'm almost, I've got one book left, guys, on my November plans. That was uh, what Rising Sun by Michael Crichton. And uh, I was like, well, I mean, am I going to finish the month this early? So I decided, I said I was going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and finish Dragon Republic. I was about halfway through with it. Uh, read a little bit this morning. So I think that... Uh, I've got less than half of it left, so I'll go ahead and finish that. It wasn't a, I told you guys it wasn't a DNF thing with me. It was just a sci-fi September and spooky season and really, really cut into my plans. And then I really wanted to read the, the that Wayward Pines trilogy by Blake Crouch. And I was like, you know what? I follow schedules on just about everything here. I'm going to do what I want for a change. And that's what I did. But I have gotten ahead of myself, so I did go ahead and pick that back up. I'm going to try to, uh, to to finish that up and then see where I schedule uh, the uh, the drowning is it burning god drowning god burning god I think it's burning god is book number three 
of that series. And then, of course, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll hit Rising Sun, and that will be it for November, guys. We'll be done for the month and ready to head into a new Malazan month, which is December. Malazan and the God Blind Trilogy. That is my plans for December, and I'm very, very excited about it. But let's go ahead and move along, guys, to this week on the channel. I try not to do too many of those uh, fan casting videos because I feel like all they do is end up with uh, hateful comments down below. Lots of accusations, lots of assumptions, you know, if you cast a certain gender, a certain race, a certain religion, things like that. It's never what I'm trying to do with those fan casting. To me, is always more, this is what I was imagining while I've read it. Now, I've read Dune 13 times, so this cast has rotated constantly in my head. Uh, just always trying to update it to modern actors. Like, if they were making a movie this today, who would I see now with this? I had a movie going, and this this most, most recent read in September... So I was able to picture the new actors in my head, but there are still roles in that book that haven't been cast for Dune Part 2. So that's what I kind of wanted to do there when I read this most recent time. These are some of the options that I included and reasons why. And I think it was a pretty nice mix of just about everything you could think of there. And uh, the feedback was actually really good. You know, uh, a lot of people aren't into the fan casting videos and stuff. They'd rather me just talk about, like, uh, how does the spice freighter work or something. Uh, I'm not really one to break that down. I think Quinn already does a great job of that at Ideas of Ice and Fire. So uh, me doing that would just seem silly. So that's never what I'm going to really do with Dune content. But, you know, we are still excited about the movie. And we are very, very excited about uh, Dune Part 2 getting made. So I want to kind of talk about some of the ideas I had for that. I think the the biggest outside-the-box pick I had was for Fade Rautha. And I think a lot of people have been like, look, I've never watched that show but i think that's a great great casting so uh you guys check that video out if you got a second and let me know uh kind of what you would do if you were sitting in the casting chair who you would pick for some of those roles if you've read the book or you know even if you haven't you just, it's okay you don't you don't have to to have fun and play around who would you picture as an emperor you know who would you picture as an evil harkon and things like that it's not it's not a problem if you've seen the movie i think you'll be fun and then i did my book haul for october which always just does crazy crazy traffic because people are, they, they, they love books. I mean, if they're on this channel, guys, if the chances are they love books. They're here for the books, right? And that's what that video is all about, is showing you guys the books, showing the things that uh, people were nice enough to send to me, the stuff I treated myself with, uh, some of my digital purchases, things like that. And, of course, just getting to show them off and talk about them. And uh, I think I derailed only about three or four times in that one. You know, at least I didn't talk about the coffee this time. I bet got some good coffee this morning, by the way. Uh, what else? Uh, Kindle. Yes, the Kindle made a big comeback. Um, I didn't expect to do another Kindle review. I uh, did go ahead and upgrade my wife's paper white just because I felt like, why not? I felt like she uses it enough that it could justify that expense. And then eventually, uh, hopefully, if one of my kids ever becomes a reader, they can have the, the old paper white. And I'll get a bunch of comments about how dare you give your kids your old paper white <laughs> or something like that. But, uh, yeah, that's that's really it. I wanted to talk about the new paper white. Talk about if I thought it was worth the upgrade. Uh, short answer, yes. Watch the video for those reasons. Um, it, it's one of those things, like I said, I, I know people think that I do Kindle videos just for clicks or something because they get a lot of good traffic. I totally did not intend to do one for this, but I got so many requests about, uh, look, there's a new Kindle. I need I need to know if I need to buy it, and I need you to tell me. So a lot of people have started to look at me as like the booktube authority on Kindles, which I, I, I can't believe because... I mean, I do get some comments in there about, like, you didn't do this, 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 this. I'm like, yeah, I'm not a tech channel. I mean, watch my previous Kindle videos. I'm never going to show you, like, the side-by-side -side comparison and how many DPI and all that stuff. That's not what I do. I just talk about, as a reader, using it for a few hours, how I felt about it. And, yeah, I think it's very much worth the upgrade if you got the money from the old Paperwhite. If you got an Oasis, I think you'll be fine because it's about on par. But, uh, say, you were... You didn't really like the size of the Oasis. I, I think the paper white might be more what you're looking for, but there are uh, pluses and minuses to that as well. So uh, check that out if you can. Uh, guys, it was kind of a, a busy week. Uh, so much Scout stuff going on. We got a big uh, Cub Scouts uh, camp out this weekend. In case you guys don't know, both kids are in Scouts now. So that is really eating into some time because uh, they are in different packs. So that means different meetings, different times of the week. So we've decided to divide and conquer on those. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been rough. But we got, a, we got a camp out this weekend with Scouts, and we're very excited about that. It's always a lot of fun getting to do that, earning some badges and all those things, but you guys don't want to hear all that dad stuff. That's why I'm saying that that's why uh, the content was a little a little slower this week, and it might be having a change here coming soon. We'll talk about it. Let's do that. 
by getting into next week plans, guys. I know I did not get to that Gerald's Game review this week. I'm going to try to get on that. Look, it's going to happen in the month of November because Gerald's Game is the Into the Multiverse for the month of November. If that's the one I've got to let slide, that's the one that's going to slide. It'll happen before the end of the month. Uh, with that, really, it's uh, I, I don't like to you know rush the Stephen King reviews. I like to really take my time going depth with those. So um, that was the one that I kind of cut out of last week or this previous week because I just, uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to mail it in on any of those, and I just, I did not have the time to really go all in for an Into the Multiverse video right now. So I'll try to get that out this week. And, and guys, in case you don't know, uh, next Friday, a week from today, Wheel of Time premieres on Amazon. So, yes, I'm going to be doing As the Wheel Turns with Madison after that. But as for this coming week, what do I got as a preview for that? Well, I'm bringing back the Wheel of Time wish list. You guys that followed me on my first reading of the Wheel of Time know that the second half of that series, I started making my wish list. Here's what I would like to see happen in the next book. Well, I'm going to kind of do that with this show just for the season. I'm not going to do it like by episode or nothing. Wheel of Time wish list, things that I would like to see in season one. I'm still debating... If uh, I know a way to do that spoiler free, because I don't think so. So uh, I think like the old Wheel of Time wish list, you will have had the need to uh, read that book probably to, to, to get to understand what I'm talking about. But uh, really, I'm just going to talk about things that happen in, in Eye of the World and Great Hunt and what I would like to see translated to the screen the way it is. So uh, that that's uh, kind of a work in progress. I haven't really decided how I'm going to do it yet. So uh, don't freak out, but we'll see what happens. But that'll be early in the week to give time for people to talk about what they'd like to see before the premiere on Friday the 19th. Very, very excited. Then I got some plans, guys. I got to do one more Kindle video. Now, I got all these Kindles now, and I got everybody asking, okay, look, there's just so many of them. Now, what should I buy? So I'm going to kind of talk about each one of them, talk about the differences in them, and kind of what I think if you're looking for this, this is the one you should go with. This is your price range. If this is your expectations, this is what I think you should do. So that'll be the last Kindle video, guys. Hopefully, until the inevitable release of the Kindle color but again i think i want to get that one out because uh, so many people are looking to buy one on black friday so i'd like to get that out before then so i uh, hate to hit you with back-to-back -back weeks of kindle videos but you know what a lot of people appreciate those videos i guess so uh, i guess i shouldn't have to apologize for it but again I, I know that a lot of you either have a kindle or you have no interest in a kindle and so you don't need to hear me talk about it that's okay. I, I, I appreciate you guys letting me help those who are still looking to make that purchase or not. And then, guys, if I have time this week, uh, like I said, I'm going to be gone all weekend. That's why I do a lot of my recording. Uh, I'll try to do my review for the Wayward Pines trilogy. I thought this was just a kick-ass story, and I want to talk about it. I need to talk about it all as one because it really is one book divided into three parts. It's uh, it's one story. So uh, I, I want to talk about it as a whole. But like I said, I, I trying to get into that without uh, spoilers is going to be a lot of fun because there is a huge, huge twist in book one that changes the trajectory of the rest of the series. But I want to talk about what this is, why I think that you guys should read it, and what just makes it absolutely awesome. And I love that Blake Crouch continues to be very engaging with me on Facebook. So fingers crossed I can get him to come on the channel eventually, maybe when he's doing the uh, the, the press junket for his new book coming out next year. That'd be really, really awesome because uh, he has become one of my favorite modern authors. I can't wait to read more of his stuff. Five for five for me. I think just a very, very high five for five. So uh, I'm going to be going back and read some other stuff now. Just got that book abandoned from Steph, one of my patrons. Very excited. And there are other trilogies that I've heard of that I'm interested in checking out. Theo just sent me a couple of Blake Crouch books and other patrons. So thank you guys. It's awesome. I'm excited to continue this trip down Blake Crouch's mind and see what he has written that I haven't checked out yet. So I'm very excited. This author has a very good backlog of stuff to check out. And I want to talk about Waver Pines if I got a shot at it. Now, that's where it kind of what brings me to this. Um... I'm considering, guys, taking the channel down to three videos a week. And I want to say it's not just because of the work-life balance thing. Um, things have gotten very, very busy with my my job and then trying to do all this stuff with kids. It's just it's been, uh, been – I've been Bilbo, you know, butter over too much bread is how I felt lately. So it isn't just that as well as uh, engagement starting to fall off a cliff. Uh, I always knew it would eventually happen. I said I thought that the ceiling for this channel was 50000 and, you know, we've exceeded that. Uh, so um, I think that might start to be a little bit of oversaturation. I think five videos a week might be too much. 
Uh, there's people who you know miss one, they miss two, and I, I understand. I mean, shoot, I'm like a month behind on a lot of my subscriptions. So uh, I understand everybody just can't get to them, you know, when they're new, but then they just kind of get lost in the algorithm. So uh, I want to stick with quality over quantity. So I'm thinking about just going down to three videos a week, including the weekly update. And just kind of seeing how that goes, especially during the holidays when things can get a little thick. So uh, we'll see. That's nothing that's set in stone yet. It's just something I'm thinking about because, like I said, uh, views and engagement has really, really started to slide. I thought it was just spooky season, but now it's kind of bled over into November. And, uh, yeah, it's, the channel is now on its lowest trajectory in almost a year. So uh, it's just something I'm experimenting with. Like I said, I like to look at the numbers, look at the data, and see what is, is working, what is what direction things are trending. And that might be my next uh, my next course of action. Like, there might be a slight bit of oversaturation, but guys, that takes us away from books. There are a couple of entertainment things. Let's talk about some TV and movie talk. I'll talk about those reviews for that movie Red Notice. Uh, I think that movie comes out today. Uh, it's the one with The Rock and Gal Gadot and um, uh, what, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. So on paper, you're like, hey, this is a pretty good cast. And it's just getting dragged by critics. And... <laughs> here's the thing I talk about with critics what I've talked about before is if critics hate it there's a good chance I'm going to like it I'm not saying the movie's going to be good I mean I'm going to watch it it's got the rock in it that's that's like the only actor in the house that all four of us love you know so we're going to watch it regardless and I mean Gal Gadot who, who doesn't want to look at her for two hours right and Ryan Reynolds uh, my wife's not mad okay so what I'm saying is that uh, I'm going to check the movie out regardless but why I think critics really drag any movie that comes directly to Netflix is because it means they don't need a job anymore people people don't need their opinion to see if they need to go see a movie or not they've already got Netflix they're going to check out the new feature-length movie with AAA movie stars in it, you know, right away. Uh, they're going to check that out. They don't need you to tell them if they need to spend their money or not to go see it. So I said that when Bright came out. And, look, Bright was an okay movie. I didn't think it was as bad as, as people said. I didn't think it was that great either. It was worth watching. But if you looked at the critics' score and the audience scores, it's always something I'm talking about, the big divide between critics and audience. And with this one, I don't think it's political in nature. This one, I think it's just, okay, uh, we don't like this, uh, you know, Hollywood-style movie going straight to a streaming service because people don't need to listen to our opinions on it first. So that's just my opinion. I could be way off on it. Uh, I haven't agreed with critics on much of anything in a long, long time. So, uh, like I said, when they usually when they don't like it, uh, I do end up liking it, which has me worried, guys, because Wheel of Time. Season one, uh, the early reviews are out and they're pretty, pretty positive. So I'm like, oh no. <laughs> now look, I'm not saying I wanted bad reviews or anything. I, I think they just kind of kept the, the expectations tempered a little bit. And uh, like I said, uh, critics don't usually like sci-fi, fantasy, and horror very much, you know. So it's a, uh, it's one of those things like, okay, great, they're really loving it. Uh, I hope I'm gonna like it. But look, I'm I'm pretty positive about the show. I expect there to be uh, lots of changes. Uh, there's been lots of red flags in Rafe Judkins' interviews over the last two years, especially the one he just did with io9. Really was like, that fundamentally changes the series as a whole, but hoping these are just marketing things. We'll see. We'll see, guys. I'm very, very optimistic about it. I can't wait to watch it. I've got the day off next Friday. I'm going to just sit and watch them right back to back to back next weekend and then or for next Friday and then probably watch them again over the weekend with my wife and see if she is digging the show. But last I want to talk about the Matrix. Yes, the Matrix. My kid was interested in watching the Matrix. And I thought he's nine. Is he ready for this? Uh, it is rated R movie. He watched some horror movies and he was a champ about it. Really I just thought maybe it might be a little slow for him because I mean look growing up the MCU generation you need something to explode every five minutes to hold your attention and that's really a thinker of a movie but he loves Morpheus and I don't know where he has seen Morpheus before but he loves Morpheus I don't know if it was spoofed in some movie or something but he loves Morpheus he all the time talking about take the red pill take the blue pill you know all those things about Morpheus he saw when we were in a Halloween store he saw like the glasses you can just put on like with one hand he's like Morpheus I'm like how do you know this so anyway we watched the movie and he loved it he loved it and man that's just a great great movie at his age incredible well I went into expecting watching it in 4k because I have a 4k tv now these special effects are not going to age well. It's a 22-year-old movie. It's going to look rough, but you got to understand this. We're groundbreaking what happened. It still looks good, guys. It still looks really, really good. Uh, yeah, the uh, 
the the thing they put in his belly button looks a little off but again nothing that breaks the movie i don't think i, I think that the the sentinels still look really good the nebuchadnezzar still looks really good but god guys the fight scenes are still just so amazing in that and it's just such a great great movie and then of course we watch matrix reloaded now matrix reloaded I got a lot of shit from people where I said, I could test it. That is a great, great sequel. Revolutions was bad. That was bad. That was not fun at all. So I think that people kind of lumped those together. Is Reloaded as good as the original? Of course not. But I think it's a great, great sequel. Sure, the Zion stuff got a little weird, a little draggy. But everything else has... I'd argue some of the action scenes in that are even better than the original. So um, my kid loved the part where Neo's fighting like 400 Smiths at once. He thought that was just fantastic. And of course, Morpheus with the katana on the uh, the 18-wheeler. He just, I mean, he was about it. He loved it. I think the last 25, 30 minutes of that movie are just an adrenaline ride. So good. So I say revisit those sequels if you haven't. Now, look, I'm not going to lie. I'm dreading watching Revolutions with him, uh, but uh, he still wants to watch it. So he's very excited. He's all in on this world. He's already saying he wants to go as Neo for, for next Halloween. I was like, I thought you liked Morpheus. He's like, yeah, but I got that coat like Neo, <laughs> which is just a Halloween thing that he got when he went as Grim Reaper last year. So uh, it's, it's it's wild, guys. It's, it's really cool to share those kinds of things with your kids and see uh, how it, inf- it influenced them. And the thing was is... Uh, is I, I think my kid might be smarter than I was in my 20s because when I saw that movie in my 20s the first time, there's a lot of it I didn't get. He got everything on the first try. So I don't know if The Matrix has just become so much a part of our pop culture that the ideas presented in that movie are just like common thought now or what. Or if he's just, uh, who knows, maybe he's the one. Maybe he's following the White Rabbit. But guys, that was my week. It was a great, great week. I'm excited about the camping trip this weekend. And talking about uh, Wheel of Time sometime next week. It's going to be a great, great week ahead, guys. So drop in the comments. Let me know what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're listening to, and what you're playing. All the above or one of the above. Anything, guys. There are no wrong answers. So have yourselves an awesome weekend.